So who of the young people remembered to get a bulletin today? Wave them at me. Bravo, sir. The rest of you, you know you're supposed to. Don't forget. So who can guess what we're going to talk about today? Yes, we'll talk about what happened in the church today, but we're going to talk about what happens in the church today and every Sunday. We're talking still about the prayers of the Divine Liturgy. So, did any of you read what I wrote? Oh well. I was saying that the first prayer of the Liturgy, the prayer of the Trisagion Hymn, which I put in there, is interesting because it has all of these parts and if you look at it I'm going to sum it up real quick it talks about by saying who God is and then it says who we are in relationship to God and then it says how God wants us to approach him and then having said all of those things the last couple sentences are actually talking to God and asking him for mercy and salvation and grace to do what we come to do, which is to say, to do the divine liturgy and to receive the gifts from God. So, it's interesting. Generally, when you go to ask for a gift, do you come and say, so, because you are a wonderful person, and I think you are awesome, and because I am not so awesome, but I have a good relationship with you, and because you told me to come and ask you for things in this way, I am coming to ask for things in this way. Do, do we talk like this? Is this how you go to your mother? Is this how you go to your mother if you want a favor? But maybe we should think about it a little bit. Now, if my children came to me and told me all about how wonderful I was at first and how horrible they were, I would at least be intrigued, it would be a little different, right? But I want you to think about it. When you ask your parents for something, more to the point, when you've gotten in trouble, when you've done something wrong and you're coming to ask for forgiveness, are you coming to your parents because you know that okay, someone's phone is on and it's not mine, I turned it off. Do you come to your parents and say, you know, I'm a wonderful kid and I never do anything wrong except, well, this one time I may have broken the window with a baseball bat. Is that how you would lead into that? Okay. What do we say when we're asking our parents to forgive us if we're smart? And if we do it right, we say, I screwed up. I was stupid. And I know you love me, and I hope you can love me enough to forgive me for this awful thing that I just did. I know it was the brand new window, and you just spent thousands of dollars putting it in, and I just put a baseball through it. Have any of you ever done that? That's a previous generation's sin, right? Okay. Well... Think of the things that you do that you need to ask your parents for forgiveness for. What I want you to understand is we don't come to God saying, God, we're pretty cool. I put on my church clothes today. I said all my prayers all week long. I did my fasting on Wednesday and Friday, so I'm good. I get to be here today. So now you have to give me what I want. Is that how we would approach anybody else in the world? Not really. And it's not how we approach God, and it's not how we approach our parents. There's a reason for this, and I want you to think about it. Our parents don't love us because we're always good, right? Because we're not, are we? Mm -hmm. Dimitri, are we always good? No. Thank you. But we know that our parents love us anyway, right? Do they love us because of the things that we do? 
They love us in spite of the things that we do. Right, parents? Right? Okay. When we come to God, we come to Him as His children. We know that we've done bad, and we know that He loves us. Now, if you've done a bad thing, does it make any sense to hide from your parents? Not usually. They tend to find out what's going on, generally. They also tend not to be quite as mad at you as you expect, usually. Right? Zoe, what do you think? That's okay. But God is like this. God loves us. And He wants to forgive us. So when we come to the church, I'm getting back to the prayer, I am. When we come to the church, why do we talk so much about how wonderful God is and how sinful we are and how He wants us to approach Him? Does He need to hear these things? Who needs to hear these things? Us. So we're saying it to remind ourselves of why we come to church and how we're supposed to do this. Right? So now do you maybe understand why I keep on telling you that you should pay attention to what we say in the church? Not at all. It doesn't make any sense. Thank you, Vasily, for being honest. Oh boy. Okay. When we come into the church, the prayers that the priest says mean something. They are our words. If they're not words that we can say automatically, do you think you can make up the words of the liturgy by yourself without any help? Mm -mm. Right. But if we read them, then we know what we're supposed to be thinking, what we're supposed to be feeling if we want to come before God and receive grace and love and mercy. And I'll give you a hint. It's a pretty good template for how we approach our parents too. All right? Now, at the same time, if you ever come to your parents and say, Mom, you have given me the promise that you, if I ask you for help, you will always give my requests, even if I did something really bad beforehand. Especially if I come together with my brother and my sister, and we all ask you to forgive us together, because you love us more if we're all in a group. Okay? I'm not saying do that, although it might be funny. Right? But this is what we say in this prayer, and listen to it, because it says why we're here. Lord, we're talking to God. You have given us grace. You give us the chance to offer these common prayers with one heart. You have promised to grant the requests of even two or three who are gathered in your name. And look how many we are here. A lot more than two or three. I talked about this before. Vasily, don't count. Goofball. <laughs> Fulfill now. Answer our prayers. Give us what we ask for of your servants as they benefit us. Give us knowledge of your truth and grant us everlasting life in the world to come. That's an interesting prayer. It says, you told us to come pray to you this way. You said if we gather together and we ask you for mercy and salvation, you will always give it to us. That's why we're here. Because otherwise we wouldn't dare to enter the presence of Almighty God. We know that He is holy, we know that He is perfect. If we know He's holy and perfect, why would we think He would love us? He told us He does. And then He showed us that He does by dying and coming back from the dead. So, this is what's going on. This is why we're here. And if I can get you to think about it a little bit, that would be great. My kids are gone. They're not paying attention to anybody. Or at least they're not paying attention to me. Hmm? <laughs> but that's okay. It's a long service. I know that. But if you can pay attention even a little bit, open the pew book, find where we are, and follow along. And if you find where we are once and spend the rest of the service looking over that part again and again and again, trying to understand what it means, then you'll get something out of the service. I promise. Okay? So, most of you can read, right? Show me who can't read. Who can't read? Okay. You'll learn. Next year, you'll be able to read. Well, not you. Next year, you'll be able to read. Okay. Good. So, let's go to Sunday school. Thank you for listening. Have a good time.